Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Christopher Cope. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Orbital Studios. And um, uh, Eric doesn't know me because I'm put in the dark rooms and fed mushrooms while these guys do all of the fun work. So I probably have the least interesting things to say, but um, I did want to give you a little bit of a background on Orbital Studios. We uh, um, started exploring this a little over two years ago. AJ Wedding is my uh, co-founder and part business partner. And um, we've done an extensive amount of research and um, really literally started out of his garage playing with LED panels from this guy's company, Planar, and they've been great partners with us in terms of uh, helping us develop uh, LED panels that are specific for filmmaking. And um, that's one of the things that's unique about Orbital Studios as well is everybody that works at our company uh, comes from a production background. So everything we do is absolutely focused on how we can make filmmaking be a complement to what uh, filmmakers are doing out there. We're not looking to use technology to replace anything that we've been using in the past. Um, we're looking for ways to, to make it better, make it faster, make it cleaner, and get a, a better final product. Um, and we have a lot of great partners that we work with along with Planar, um, and we are scaling up to become the first uh, studio um, that is um, focused on uh, using data standards um, from an audiovisual uh, standpoint as opposed to uh, AV standards. And so that helps with things like latency, it helps with speed, it also allows us to um, uh, provide r really secure uh, transfer, transfer of data. Um, and in fact, one of our partners, uh, well, soon to be partner, uh, Packet Fabric will allow us to transfer uh, information over the, over the um, I guess the, not the dark web, what is it called again? The, uh, the fiber, dark fiber, yeah. Um, uh, that's an in-house joke. But um, at any rate, uh, we're really excited about where Orbital Virtual Studios is going, and um, I really want to turn over most of the uh, opportunity to talk to Leah and Leo. Leah is our producer, so all of the productions that come into uh, Orbital Virtual Studios in LA excuse me, um, are, um, are produced by Leah. And Leo is our in-house um, DP. And um, uh, probably one of the more uh, seasoned at this point and experienced uh, DPs out there uh, in terms of shooting against LED walls. Um, our LEDs, so I'll bore you with all of those, these details so that they can talk to you about all the fun stuff. Um, our wall is uh, 1.5 pixel pitch. Um, we have, uh, what is it, 44 million pixels on our wall, um, and uh, that's what we call our Little Dipper. Uh, we will be building a Big Dipper uh, soon. The Little Dipper is 75 feet long. It's in a curved, sh uh, curved arc, and um, uh, it's 15 feet tall. Our next one is going to be 180, 180 or 50 or something. I don't know, around 180 feet long and 24 feet tall, and um, I have no idea how many pixels that's going to be. More than enough. Like, a lot. So um, uh, that's kind of our technology. Again, we're focused on how we can make uh, filmmaking better for, for people, um, not use the technology to make it any more difficult. So I guess without further ado, I'll turn it over to Leah. Hey, everybody. Um, so I thought I would just share a few projects we've been working on in the last year at Orbital. So I have a clip of the finished product along with the BTS so we can actually discuss how it was made and how Orbital facilitated in different techniques in filmmaking.
Hey. <laughs> so those are two clips from one of our earlier projects called Camille. And we started our projects really based on the checklist of things that couldn't be done on a virtual wall. Um, so Leo will speak to the beginning of the checklist, if you will. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hey, guys. Um, so yeah, so you saw the clips. One of the challenges that Catherine uh, had for us, uh, Catherine Brillard, if you might know that name, she's kind of a superstar, but she, uh, she said that one of the things that uh, were problematic on virtual productions were uh, broad daylight exteriors, uh, like around high noon, two o'clock, something like that. And to get that realism um, was very difficult. So the combination of Carl and his engineering and his pixel pitch for our wall and combined with the ingenuity with everybody at Orbital, we were able to to make daylight happen. And that was our test facility. I don't know if you saw how tiny, I think we had a 10 foot by, 10 foot by 15 foot act active stage. So like, obviously the wall was a little bit longer than that, but like just the, before we start seeing off the wall, we only had about 10 feet by, fifth, by 12 feet square or like a rectangle. So that was uh, all inside of that and was run by eight people. Um, at the time. That was one of our earlier things. So instead of flying to Kansas and burning a field down over and over, um, part of the magic of having an LED wall is making things repeatable. I mean, as a producer, that is like game changing. Like not only am I not flying a crew across the country to shoot in the Midwest, but that scene with the fire, we could just repeat over and over and over. And you can do the math of how much money that saves not going through all the pyro and fire department and the permits and all that stuff. So, um, and as Leo was saying about the, the daylight scene, um, one of the major misconceptions about shooting on a LED wall is that you can just use the LED wall to light the subject and then they're shocked when it doesn't quite work that way. So Leo can speak more to that, but this was the beginning of us learning as a team how to match the light of the subject to the background. Um, you know, if you were in an actual field, you'd be using the natural daylight on the talent, and this was a very different way of lighting. So Leo and his gaffer can talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so a lot of times when you're, you're shooting movies and TV in the field, you'll, you'll enter a site and then you'll have like a 40 by 40 silk on a crane, and then to knock down the sun, and then to push light in from sideways. And, and so my gaffer, Hunter, and I, we realized, wait, we already have, we, we just, we already have the ceiling and we're pushing light in sideways. We just gotta, we just have to fine tune it to make it look real. So um, there's believability, and there's you know there's varying degrees of believability as far as lighting goes. And so to to find that nuance between the unreal or the 3D asset and what we can, what we're capable with physical lighting on stage, was a joy. It's 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 really fun. Yeah, it's really how well the DP can match the ambiance and the lighting to the background. As, as much work as it is to design these backgrounds, you have to match it in a way that it's believable. And that's the first thing you'll notice that just feels off, like if it's not matched just right. <clears throat> so I'll show another clip of another video we made and we can talk about that. Not only did you disobey, but an officer was killed. So please, tell me about your morality. You don't understand. Or maybe you don't want to understand. You should fear those who hold your leash. Now, what happened? This is just a couple stills. And I don't know if you guys have visited the Noidum booth yet, but they are very dear friends. Or if I have any Noidum friends here. No? All right. Well, um... That was a fun little science experiment where we integrated motion capture. Oh, my bad. <laughs> That's the next one. Don't get ahead of yourself. Um, we integrated motion capture and a live actor in real time. So um, you could see one talent. Uh, I don't know. Can you rewind it a little bit? Just like a little. One of the things to note is like we're always like throwing yeah, this, stuff this up against a wall to try to see what sticks. And this was version one of uh, motion capture with Meta, uh, Digi, or MetaHuman uh, 
an actor responding to that human and shot on our virtual wall. So this is version one of that. This is, uh, so I think we refine it, but keep going. Yeah, we have our, you can see our live actor in the corner and then um, facial motion capture controlling the metahuman in real time. So they could actually play off each other and play with the lines and actually act and interact with each other for the scene. Um, so say hi to Noidum when you're over there. And uh, it was really interesting because um, it was halfway through shooting that we discovered, wait a second, the, the person in the, in the suit needs to be able to re like see the expression of the re live actor, but he's nowhere, he's not there next to him. He can't see him. So we needed to create a witness camera off camera for the live actor so that the person in the suit could see it. So now we had two screens, like an aha music video, you know, like they're on two di different sides of the thing, but it was, it was happening right, right there. And we were like, whoa, anyhow, that's, <laughs> it's fun. Okay. All right, next one. This one no, has no sound, so. So this was with Airy Trinity. Um, we wanted to put a OptiTrack tracker into an Airy Trinity um, cage. If those of you know an Airy Trinity cage, it can it can go over itself, and so you can lose tracking. So one of the things, um, working with the spike ball originally. Uh, it wouldn't fit in the cage, and then other ver versions of trackers wouldn't fit in that. I knew that if we could get into a Trinity cage, we could get into an Oculus rig, we could get into an underwater housing, we could get it. So the Trinity cage was the bottleneck, so right here you'll see the behind the scenes of this. So the other fun thing about this is we had absolutely no physical production design. Mm -hmm. So it's literally the camera operator and the talent in this world. To do this, we need almost zero latency um, and 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 complete tracking within. Uh, there's our stage, that's home base. That looks fucking great. I think that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th that's that was really fun. That that went everywhere for a while. Um, we got within four feet, three feet of the wall, and um, we could shoot no, across the wall. We could as shoot well. across the wall. No more a. No thanks, Carl. Um, I mean, normally it's a fine line of creating the right physical production design that integrates elements in your digital design. But this one, we wanted to see how much we could do purely in a digital environment. God damn it. Tech! Jen! Who's that? So yeah, this is a great example of finding a production designer that can work early on in the production to integrate the digital art with the physical art. That's one thing we found in the workflow with virtual production is really a lot of your post-production becomes pre-production. You need to get your team on way earlier. Um, so yeah, I think that was a great example of us like refining that process, finding the right amount of sand and gack in the foreground that ties it together into one seamless project. And again, experimenting with bright sun daylight and the last little clip in you know sunset magic hour again the joy of repeatability instead of planning your entire day around you know the four minutes of beautiful light at the end of the day i can just make it sunset for 12 hours it is a dream and and one of the other things i i think you saw that uh 270 degree wrap around on the techno crane on on the mark there and it, it goes into a sun flare. 
Um, I don't know if you guys remembered that little piece, but um, that was because we, you know, we're experimenting with filters and lenses and lens coatings to try to create more of a um, flare from the actual wall. So that was from the wall. So the more you can muddy up the wall or the image, whether it's like foreground elements or like smoke or whatever, it, it, it actually sells. And because, thanks to Carl, we can get so close to the wall, to like almost three feet away from the wall, that allows us to have uh, lenses that are able to, we're able to go wider and wider and to have that. And we, sometimes we're in handheld mode and, and stuff. Yeah, not only can we get close to the wall, but we can even rack focus to the wall. I think a lot of times people in earlier virtual production are staying farther from the wall, keeping it a lot, of, little out of focus to be a little more forgiving. Um, but with the tighter pixel pitch, we can get really close and even pull focus to the wall and keep the image looking real. So this last clip I want to show you um, is kind of a 2.0 version of integrating mocap and live actors in real time. So you saw our first clip of the first time we used that science experiment, and then we did it again more recently and upped the ante a little bit. So yeah, we came a long way with integrating motion capture. Um, the help of a digi double helped as well to kind of tie it together. Here's a couple clips of um, our talent doing stunts. Part of the other challenge was doing faster camera moves, integrating flying, if you will. Yeah, and it's all, and we're on a techno crane shooting uh, Sony Venice, and um, and we're yeah, as you can see down there in the in the monitor, we're trying to follow her as she does that. And so to, to, to do this, you need really fast tracking. Watch how fast this, this techno crane extends from its position there on the left side. It follows her. And we had a... Um, That's OptiTrack there. Thank, thank you, Carl. Go stop by OptiTrack. Um, <laughs> Um, so that wraps up what I had to share with you. Wanted to give you a taste of how you can integrate the physical and virtual production, as Cope said, to marry them to be friends. They're not competing, but they can really enhance each other and really expand what you're able to do. You can go anywhere in the world. You can position the sun where you want, make it any time of day. Um, and just the repeatability, the whole thing is, is faster. It's more efficient. Yeah. And we actually wanted to spend more time with Carl. Carl has been instrumental in helping us with a, from a networking standpoint to really take advantage of the, the pixel pitch that we have and the processor speeds. Um, we couldn't have done this without uh, the help of uh, uh, Carl from Planar and, and uh, his sister company, OptiTrack. So uh, definitely um, uh, swing over there and talk to the OptiTrack people. But um, uh, I think more so than anything else, the, the message is um, virtual production is definitely going to be the future of filmmaking. There's no doubt about that. But um, it's going to be a, um, a process of learning um, and adapting and um, taking advantage of the technology in a way that, like I said before, complements the filmmaking process. Um, Carl, uh, myself, Leah, and Leo are going to be around here for a little bit if you'd like to uh, chat any more about uh, some of the things that we've been able to accomplish on our, on our stages. Um, happy to stick around. And the other last thing I wanted to say is thanks to him and his team, we've been able to deploy both like 
kind of mobile but also modular volumes uh, around the country so that not only do we have people coming to our studio to film, but we can take an LED volume and set it up uh, on set as well, which is, I think, probably going to be even more um, the, the future of filmmaking. So um, anyway, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks. And thanks, ETC. Thank you.